Hi everyone. Today I'm going to read an essay I wrote for a class I took in college once about the ancient Greeks and Romans. This essay was originally written on June 2nd, 2010. We were studying the ancient Greeks and Romans history and philosophy fairly in depth. It was a very comprehensive class, uh, very well taught. And during one part of the class, we were to review the film Gladiator. This is after we had studied actual ancient Roman history for months. We watched Gladiator, and then we had to write a critical review on the historical accuracy of it. His essay I called 50-50. Hollywood and history can be at odds with each other, but Gladiator at least makes good effort to be historically authentic. Many are the number of reviews that seek to tear down a movie for its historical inaccuracy and what it got wrong. This I hope to avoid. Rather, I will seek to demonstrate both sides, as much as can be done with a Hollywood film, and examine Gladiator with some examples. The film opens with a campaign against the Germanic tribes that Rome had been trying to conquer for some time. Marcus Aurelius, played by Richard Harris, most trusted general, Maximus, played by Russell Crowe, inspects his men. The battle that ensues is largely authentic, but not without Hollywood touches. Roman legionnaires fighting one-on-one -on -one with German barbarians looks good, but probably wouldn't happen. The weapons used, though, are reasonably authentic. If Ridley Scott stuck to complete historical accuracy, this film couldn't have even been made in the first place. Marcus Aurelius actually had every intention to make Commodus, played by Jockman Phoenix, his successor. However, becoming emperor was indeed the highest honor in ancient Rome, and Commodus would have been devastated had he not received this honor, and this is exactly what Gladiator portrays. The depiction of the gladiators and those associated with them is surprisingly authentic for a Hollywood film. Proximo, played by Oliver Reed, bartering for slaves, spending a lot of money, Sesterces were indeed the Roman currency, and be concerned about his investment is authentic. Commodus deciding the fate of a gladiator's life using thumbs down or thumbs up is authentic. Gladiators as slaves not necessarily divided by race is authentic. A gladiator winning his freedom and then training future combatants is authentic. The problem arises in the games themselves. Gladiators would not always fight to the death in each combat. They were very expensive, after all. And this is the most severe inaccuracy. Historically, Commodus entered the arena on numerous occasions, but he would only have fought a combatant with a wooden sword. If a real sword was used, it would have been by Commodus alone to kill his opponent with no danger to himself. Gladiator portrayed the Roman Senate reasonably well by Hollywood. The senators would have worn robes with stripes of color to signify their upper-class status as the film shows, but these stripes would have been purple and not red, black, or blue. Conspiracies within the Senate are conceivable. After all, Julius Caesar was assassinated by senators in 44 BCE. But the Senate is the people, chosen from among the people, to speak for the people, as Senator Gracchus, played by Derek Jacoby, tells Commodus, is largely incorrect. Roman society functioned with a system known as clientela. In short, clientela is a system in which men in positions of power, patrons, do favors for those below them, clients, and this system found its way even down to the lowliest slave. One could argue that through clientela senators speak for the people of Rome, but Gladiator would be taking that idea too far in Gracchus's little speech. One of the most subtle yet most authentic aspects of the film is found with Lucilla, played by Connie Nielsen's, attempts to help Maximus. During the time of the film, 180 CE, women were already more powerful in Rome than they had ever been, although only from behind the scenes. The best example of their increasing power in Rome can be found by studying the Emperor Augustus and his wife Livia. Lucilla would have been able to negotiate with senators outside the view of the Emperor. She certainly would have had the resources to help a gladiator. In fact, the real Lucilla had a gladiator strangle Commodus to death. Although women were more powerful, 
Lucilla would not have been allowed in the middle of the Senate House as we see in Gladiator. Obviously, there are many more examples that can be given to show what Ridley Scott got right and what he got wrong. Gladiator is a film that makes a good effort at being historically authentic. Hollywood must always strike a balance between authenticity and art, and this film does that well. Watch Gladiator for entertainment and a reasonable amount of history, but know that at any given moment it is somewhere around 50-50 in this respect. A lot better than many other Hollywood films.